And it starts from now. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Hanoi Foreign Trade University with my members, including Mai, Wen, Deng, Ling, and Zhong. It's our honor to be here today to tell you the interesting story of VietJet and the, the reasons behind our whole recommendation for this company. VietJet's story is a fairy tale of aviation industry. Only after seven years since establishment, VietJet has become the leading low-cost carrier with domestic market share of 21.5%. One of the most important people behind this success is CEO Nguyen Thi Phu Thao, the first woman billionaire in Vietnam. Thanks to management ability, Ms. Thao and the VOD have built smart strategies for the company. One of the most significant strategies of VietJet is the application of low-cost carrier model which focus on cost optimization and offers not full service. This model's efficiency has been proven by the chess revenue of $1.2 billion in 2016 and the CAGR of net profit reaching almost 200%. With this impressive growth rate, will the chess maintain its outstanding performance or slow down and reach the cap? In order to answer this question, our presentation will show you three main parts, investment analysis, investment valuation, and risk assessment. VetJet's growth is driven by three main factors, including industry potential, leading optic metrics, and good financial performance. However, the growth is facing three challenges, including airport limitation, aircraft over-ordering, and lease pain burden. Thus, we issue a whole recommendation for this company, and now, could we start with the supporting points of the chat? The chat growth is driven by three main factors. The first factor is the industry potential. With growth in air traffic of Asia Pacific and Vietnam, the chat's passenger base is expected to double in the next five years. Vietnam and travel demand has great potential, thanks to GDP growth and tourism growth. Moreover, long topography makes the travel preferable to other means of transport. The second factor is leading operating matches. The chess operation is more efficient than its peers. Higher look arrow and the factor enable the chat to increase the number of flights and passenger of flight. Besides, a carefully focus on cost optimization, along with a young fuel efficient fleet with the age of only two years, allowed the chat to offer customer most affordable price. And the last factor is good financial performance. CHAR of a check is 64% deriving from the growth of transportation revenue, ancillary revenue, and sale of aircraft. The rise in sale of aircraft is a result from the dramatic increasing number of aircraft sold. When purchasing aircraft in large orders, the check can highly scout and thus high profit margin of 15%. In addition, the profitability ratios of the check are increasing and constantly above industry average. However, the momentum couldn't last long. These ratios are forecast to decrease gradually due to some limitation that could be presented by them right now. So, although having many potential to grow, whether five bit tax growth will be limited by three reasons, and most importantly, the first challenge, the airport capacity limitation. So, analyzing the airport, we put into consideration the current and the future prospects. So, currently, five airports, be it many operating, is have the reaching as 121% desired capacity as it served 68.5 million passengers, uh, over 56.5 million passengers of maximum desired capacity. Looking into five years, um, the capacity of these airports can only increase 11 million passengers, while the long time airport can be operated as soon as in 2025. From this, it means that the the passenger volume has limited room to grow despite its high demand. Besides the airport capacity, we also consider the market share of VHA will be stabilized due to two reasons. The first reason is the domestic. It will face fierce competition by Vietnam allies because the price gap is narrowing now and the service quality demand is increasing. Internationally, it faces difficulties to expand the business because the company ticket price is not competitive at the moment. The second challenge is the aircraft overordering. Airport bottleneck limit the passenger volume, therefore the company needs fewer aircraft to operate than its order. As we calculate in 98, 
compared to 220 aircraft is at order. The large fleet size at order can be a burden to the earning in both short terms and long terms. In short terms, it will decrease the aircraft utilization, and in the long term, it will put pressure on the expansion of, air, of flights, which again is being kept by the airport capacity. Also, the company order of Boeing is a challenge for management because operating both Boeing and Airbus for a low-cost carrier can increase an operating cost and also increase the number of pilots required, given the shortage of pilots in Asia and Vietnam right now. And the third challenge is the least expense. Least expense is a burden for VetJet because it increased the future obligation of the company. The increase in least expense means that VetJet pay a higher obligation. Currently, the least expense is recorded off balance sheet. However, if we adjust, it will be 82% of debt over capital compared to 59% on report. It means that VetJet obligation is currently underestimated. And also, it will net out the process from aircraft sailing. The SLB transactions brings the company process as inceptions and required VetJet to pay the lease expense in later years. However, in the future, as VetJet will receive fewer aircraft, it will decrease the inflow. However, the outflow will increasing because it operates a larger fleet size. Therefore, it will de decrease the profit of the company. So our valuation will be presented by Ling. We put into consideration of both support and the challenge of the company. In order to quantify our analysis, we use two approaches. We BC up with 70% and relative with 30%. Same company has been listed for the months and have different accounting methods from peers. In this CF model, we discussed the FCFF by using WACC. Our key assumption is about revenue, including two components, passenger carrier and sale aircraft. All the growth assumptions are kept by airport infrastructure limitation, as analyzed before. The passenger carrier is driven by three factors. The passenger volume can only reach by 13 million by 2022 due to airport limitation. The travel distance will stay flat at 900 kilometers domestically and slightly increase internationally, thanks to the reduction of new destinations in the future. Uh, Besides, the upcoming five years will be keep constantly as expected aggressive competition, whereas the sales aircraft segment will offer 50% gains on average and 0% gain on Boeing because company will need to operate fewer aircraft than plane and will operate only errors to maintain efficiency. We calculated the WACC at 9.13% by using the current model and company obligation statistic and 3% of terminal growth rate by using the benchmark of other massive allies and financial growth. As a result, we are at a price of 125.2 thousand dinagon. Regarding two relative analysis, we chose EV with approach due to the complicated financial structure of allied industry. The chosen peers are company with mid-cap and operating model and metrics are relevant. We conclude the median at 6.77 and multiply with enterprise value and get a price of 123.3 thousand dinagon. By the end, we arrive at a price of 124.6 thousand dinagon. In order to mitigate the model risk, we also run multiple simulation and refer model recommendation. And right now, we we'll give more details about risk assessment. The complete analysis we define three risks that significantly affect the jet. The first is the competitive dynamics. The current environment is quite favorable with the NAV allies pursuing a different segment of the jet. However, if the rival wishes to gain its target market share and foreign allies succeed to access the domestic market, future competition may lead to segment overlap, price competition, and hence lower ability to pass surcharges to customers, especially fuel and interest expense, which is the second risk. Fuel cost is the biggest component in expenses and is slowly increased by 12% of the jet fuel price, which reduce expected gross margin by roughly 4.4% in the next six years. The company has not involved in any fuel hedging activities and inexperience can be a drawback if it engages in these instruments in the future. Also, interest rate movements will specifically affect the jet in most ways, interest and lease expense. The third risk is the aircraft catastrophe, when aircraft accidents may bring damages to both human and properties. Claims from the family of customers may raise potential liability for the company. In the longer term, catastrophes may harm the reputation of the jet and raise a perception in which customers think that traveling by air is lesser than other means of transport. 
and Adam is going to give you some final words about our recommendation. Orange Church University, your time is up. I think only the thank you part is left, right? Okay. Uh, so thank you for listening. Okay, so 